All right. So, hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a lot of fun. And I'll tell you what, guys, your feedback makes it all worth it when we hear you enjoying it and using it and showing us the proof of how it's working. It really, really fires us up. So, thank you for that. That's really a validation of what we're doing. And and I think you know we love you and we have your back, everything that we can do. So, with that said, let's go get a listing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say this again because we said it earlier, but this is not a social visit. This is showtime, guys. This is the name of the game. And it is time to get it sold and get that deal done. So, in your app and on BE3 Agents is the pre qualification, pre qual, and the presentation. And it's I'm going to click it real quickly here. Did you hear that, Chris? I think you might have to do this. You might have to click it on three years because of the sound. Because here's what I'm going to do. And I need you guys to pay attention because this is just the most effective way to get this through is this is a video that Jonathan and I shot showing me doing the prequal and the listing presentation. Okay. But what I'm going to do is we're going to pause it and we're going to talk about it step by step. Um, as we go through it. And I think that's going to be the most effective way to to do this rather than, and then we'll, we'll do some role plays after it. But this is going to be about a 13 minute exercise from start to finish. And then we're going to pause it and talk about it along the way. So Chris, if you can get there. All right, ready to go. All right, I just set an appointment yesterday with a FISBO that I've been working on for a while. So this is the scene set up here. So I'm gonna make a phone call and I will do it. And here we go. So pretend I just put you on speaker, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Jonathan. Yes. It's Jeff Began, Century 21. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Listen, just calling to confirm our appointment for tomorrow at three o'clock, because that time still work for you, Hannah. Absolutely. Absolutely perfect here. In order to make the really most efficient use of our time, Jonathan. I need to confirm some information, ask you a couple questions, all right? Sure. Okay. If what I say makes sense tomorrow and you and Hannah feel confident and comfortable that we can actually sell your home, are you planning to hire Century 21 Beggins when I come out tomorrow at 3? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, great. Jonathan, are you interviewing more than one agent for the I job of selling the home? I am, yes. Yeah, okay, it's always good to do that. Who are you interviewing by chance? Uh, I have a REMAX agent named Alex Smith okay. and a boutique agent um, named Alice Marie. Alice Marie, okay, excellent. Excellent. And I've already obviously seen your house. We've been chatting for a few months together. So um, I really appreciate the opportunity. I know I can do a great job for you. Well, all the decision makers be at our meeting. I want to make sure I bring enough information for everybody. Yes. Is it just you and Hannah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And tell me again, Jonathan, where are you moving to? Madeira Beach. Madeira Beach. So much action going on in that town right now. Okay, let's pause that for a second. Okay. All right. So I want you to notice a couple things real quick. Number one, I'm reading this script. It is in front of me. This is a phone call conversation, and it doesn't have to be completely internalized, even though I know every freaking line on this, but I'm still having it in front of me because I'm making notes. Right, because this is the foundation of the listing presentation, which you're going to find out in just a minute, right, when we're finished this one, because part of the most of the listing presentation is confirming some of the questions that we asked them over the phone, which is the pre-qualification script. So it's impossible to actually do the listing presentation if you don't do the prequal. And so you're going to see how much data we get, because remember, we're not the only agents these guys are interviewing, especially now he just told me most of the time they're not even going to tell you, but they are talking with other agents. So I can bet you that most of the other agents that they're going to come in contact with will not be running their business this way. They're not doing the pre-qualification this way. They're not setting themselves as a business professional, which is what you guys are doing right here. So what do you think? Do you agree with that, Chris? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, I mean, taking notes, it, do not be, don't, don't feel like you have to memorize every single thing and not have the script in front of you. You, you can talk to some of the top coaches in a the business. They're going to tell you, I mean, I've, I've got my script right here. I bring it with me every time I go take notes on it. That's what it's there for. And I tell them, I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to take some notes and it's perfectly acceptable. I mean, your doctor, if you walk into your doctor and he's not taking notes, you better run. Yeah. Out of that doctor's like office. Down, doc? Are, I mean, you don't want to break <laughs> down anything I said to you? No. I mean, you're giving that's respect. I think it's absolutely showing them respect that I'm going to take notes, 
put them in, put them onto a script, put them onto my phone, put them somewhere. I have to make sure that I'm documenting this. Got it. All right, hit play. Let's keep on going. Um, what would be the ideal date to close the sale and get this house sold? Uh, three months from this date. Three months from now. Okay, so we'll work with one. Okay, three months from now. Got it. What do you feel? Let me ask you a question about that. Why three months from now? What's going on? Um, my wife will be having a baby. We'd like to upgrade the size of our house. Uh, her due date is next month. So we want to make sure that we plan ahead okay. um, and, uh, and get all that squared away. Um, and when we have the baby, move into the new house. Excellent. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. So having the baby, you want to upgrade size a little bit and be able to buy the house, have the baby, get the house ready, then move in once the baby's here. Right. So get the nest ready and move in, which is kind of a little bit of, the least amount of stress you can have, right? Right. Got it, okay. What do you feel the approximate value of the property is, Jonathan? Uh, 1.6. 1.6, okay. And, and do you plan to hire a century 20 Vegas to sell it at that price? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you need to sell I pause this, Chris, real quick. What I want you guys to pay attention to are little things, repeating and approving, okay? I, everything he says to me, I say back and approve. Okay, it's called repeating and approving. It's a law of reciprocity. It drops the guard, guys. It's psychological reasons for all of this stuff. It makes them feel comfortable. It makes them feel that you're paying attention because you are paying attention and you're writing it down because you're forced to pay attention because you're going to use this information later. But if you, it's just awkward. Like, let, let's role play for a second, Chris. Um, not repeating and approving. It's just awkward. So, Chris, um, you guys are selling your house, right? Where are you guys moving? Uh, we're, we're probably moving out of state. It's going to be a job here, a job there, you know, California or Colorado. Okay. Um, when's that going to be? Probably, you know, the job will start in about four months. So I'm, I'd really like to be there in three months. Okay. And um, isn't that weird? It's, right. It's for me to not, it, it's just rude. On both sides. So for me, even though I know what's coming and I know what the end, it's still awkward for me, even though I know what's supposed to happen or know what's not supposed to happen. It's awkward. It's just uneasy. There's silence and you're just like, okay. Because this is how you connect, right? So, oh my God, you're moving again. So you don't really know California is one of the options. How cool is that? Like whereabouts, where, like, where's the dream place? So where do you guys want to end up in California? You see how you get that proper, the ability to engage and have this conversation. It's a human thing. It's like if you're at a cocktail party, or a networking event and you're talking with somebody and, and conversations and you just flow. Answer, repeat, answer, repeat, approve, repeat, approve, repeat, conversational flow. But for some reason, it's so weird that real estate agents, when they start to get into question and answers, they just kind of freeze up and answer and go to the next question. And it just, it just turns you into a robot. It doesn't make any sense, but not you, because you guys know better, but repeating and approving, watch how much I do it. Because I think if you, one thing I want to point out too is we never say anything. Okay, now watch this. We never say anything. All we do is ask questions. 100% of this entire process is asking questions. No statements. Listen, keep watching, keep listening, you'll see. Only asking questions because they engage. All right, keep going. Yes. You do? Okay. Here's an interesting question for you. Will your plans change if you can't get your price um, for the property? Absolutely. All right, let's talk about that. What happens if we can't get to your 1.6? Uh, we will not be able to move. You'll not be able to move, okay. Have you already found a place? Um, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, have you already bought it? You just looking? We have not bought it. We're still looking, but we've uh, settled in the price range about 1.8. Okay, so you kind of know where you're moving. You're kind of looking. Once we get finished with this, I hope you're gonna love the way I conduct myself in business. I'd love to interview for the job to be your buyer's rep too. On that, but we'll, we'll get there one step at a time. Great. And how much do you own the property now? Uh, free and clear. Free and clear. Congratulations. Thank you. Now you're in a great spot. Will you help finance the home for the buyer, or do you want to take all your cash out for the next property? We need the cash for the next property. Okay, you can put it all in the next property. Got it. Now, I've obviously seen the house, but I'd love to know from your perspective. Just describe the house for me in your words. Okay, uh, pause. Built in. This is a really important part. Okay, really important part. Describe the house to me in your words. And you really have to zip it here and make notes because listen, I this is part of the process, right? We're doing the prequal, then we do the preview, and then we do the presentation. Okay. So this is just information gathering. If you don't pay attention to the words that they're about to use right now, you're shooting yourself in the foot. 
This is the keys to the kingdom right now. This is when the dovetail cabinets come into play. This is when the chef's gourmet kitchen comes in. This is when the spectacular view comes out, right? These are their words. And if you want to align with them, people like people who are like themselves. Like themselves. So and if whatever the words they say are the words you need to say back. It, I guess these are the little things that make such a huge difference in this business. So pay attention to this one. So repeating and approving, especially now, uh, repeating back exactly their same words. In 2005, um, three bedroom or three bathroom, five. Five bed, three baths, right? <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, new updated kitchen, um, also updated uh, master bathroom. Updated okay, kitchen and master bathroom. Very cool. All right. So I hear the kitchen and the master bath. Is that what the most recent improvements were to the property? Yes, sir. Okay. Are any other improvements needed from your perspective? No, sir. Okay. Knowing what you know about your property in the neighborhood, let's talk about the neighborhood first. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate the overall condition of your property? A nine. A nine? Okay. I agree with you on that one. What do you think would make it a 10? Um, the backyard needs a little bit of work. Um, the seawall is a little dated. It's not falling apart. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just feel that uh, it could match the house a little bit better. Okay. Backyard needs a little bit of work. Seawall is nothing wrong with it, but it might match the house a little better if it's kind of upgraded with a new cap and those type of things you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else I should know before it comes out? No, sir. All right. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, not at the moment. All right. Here's really important, Jonathan. I'm going to be sending over um, to you a link to a really cool brief presentation. It's about five, six minutes long. And I really need you and Hannah to watch it. It's going to really show you from a marketing perspective what we're going to do to get your property sold. And it's going to save us about an hour and a half tomorrow that we'll have to go through this. So will you and Hannah please take the time and watch that one? Sure. I can either text you a link or I can email it to you. How do you prefer? Uh, email it to me, please. Email it? Okay. Um, let me confirm the email. What is it? Uh, Jonathan Scott at abc.com. Jonathan Scott at abc.com would be great. I'm also going to send you a link, you'll notice, to something in a program called Dot Loop. And because I, I appreciate your attention to detail. And this is a package that has our listing contract in it, all of our disclosures, some marketing materials, and um, just a lot of things that we're going to have to go through. So you have the time to go through this in advance if you have any questions, all right? Okay. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time, Jonathan. It's going to make our meeting so much more productive tomorrow. Great. So I look forward to seeing you again at 3 o'clock. And um, we're going to go over marketing and then kind of positioning how we're going to position the house in the market. Sounds good. All right. See you tomorrow. Call me if you have any questions. Will do. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay. Six minutes. Pause that. So that's, that's six minutes, start to finish. It's a little longer because we're stopping and, and doing a play-by-play. -play. But for six minutes on this one, I, I bet you whoever else they're interviewing did not do this. So automatically I win. We're already leading the race. So all we have to do is not screw it up now because we've already elevated ourselves to a different level. We're explaining how we run our business. I didn't say a damn thing. All I did was ask questions, let them answer, repeated back everything he said to me and approved it. And asked another question, listened to his answer, repeated back his answer and approved it. Ask another question, repeated back his answer and approved it, right? So there was probably 20 something questions there that we just had a conversational flow that was positive or negative from his perspective. Positive, absolutely positive. 100% positive. He agreed with me. He told he 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 listened to me. I said something, he agreed with me. It's 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 all positive. And so now I have yep. even when he had something negative to say about well the seawall probably needs a little work. It probably you didn't go and say, "Whoa, well, well, we could do this. We could fix this. We could you didn't go into any of that. It's just straight so the backyard and the seawall might need a little bit of attention. Great, excellent. You know, just use those words right back to him, said exactly what it was and kept it all positive. Yeah, because there's no, I don't want to blow anything at this stage because it's, it's teed up for me now. It's mine to win. But, all right, let's set the stage because let's say this was a FISBO. I've talked to him seven times already. I've been to his house a bunch of times. I knocked on his door, I sent him video texts. We've had these conversations. I set the appointment. This is probably our eighth or ninth engagement right? Which is positive because he likes me at some point or else I wouldn't have had the second one or the third one or the fourth one or the fifth one. So this is just a natural flow, right? A close is just a natural end to a brilliant presentation. And this is part of the presentation, guys. Just because it's the prequal script, it's part of the listing presentation, which is why it's in this, this class segment right now. It's listing prequal, which rolls straight into this one. So hit the pause button again. And now we're going to go the actual listing presentation as if I'm at their house. And I, we're gonna go through that because this is the fun part, guys. This is showtime. And watch how I take control. 
It's still, I don't say a damn word. I just ask questions, repeat back and approve, repeat back and approve. I guide them through the process that ends up with a, them picking a price, not me picking a price, them picking a price, and then we sign the contract. So watch this flow. Six minutes of the most important six minutes of my career, because the way that worked just set me up completely. And here we go. So here we are at the house. How you doing, Jonathan? Hannah, how you doing? Thanks for having me over, guys. Like I was um, telling you, you'll be really pleasantly surprised. This is only taking between five and 25 minutes, right? Okay. Let's go have a seat at the kitchen table. Okay. All right. Jonathan, Hannah, I wrote down a couple questions. I like this is how I run my business. I want to make sure that we kind of hit everything for you. So I wrote down three really important questions for you. Right? Number one, have you guys absolutely decided to sell this property? Yes. The move is happening. Baby's happening. Everything's good. So we're ready to move. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Second question, will you price your property to sell? Will we position this property to sell versus the competition? Or do we want to position it so it sits on the market for a long time? We would like it to sell. We'd like it to sell. Okay. And the third question, and it's totally okay to say yes to this one, is do you want Century 21 bag and sand to sell for you? Uh, yes. If, um, if all goes well, absolutely. Yes, if all goes well? Okay, good. Well, Hannah, Pause that real quick. Because, guys... I want you to pay attention to this one because the listing presentation is technically over. We won. Okay. So we walking in, we're taking control over this thing and we're saying, thanks for again for having me over again. It's only taking five and 25 minutes to have a seat at the kitchen table. And then I wrote down three real important questions for you. Number one, have you absolutely decided, watch my head and you, I want you to look at these little things too. Number one, have you absolutely decided to sell this home? Okay. You have great. Okay. Number two, um, Will you price your property to sell? Will you position your property? I'm using the word positioning more than pricing, right? We're making that switch. So will you position your property to sell versus the competition? Or do you want to kind of look at my face? Or do you want to kind of price it so it sits on the market for a long time, right? And then number three, and it's okay to say yes to this, see my head, do you want Century 21 Vegas to handle the sale for you? And he just said yes. Done, okay? So now all we have to do is go into the pricing presentation on this one. And I'm, I'm, I'm going through the rest of it right now for the illustration on it, but you should just do an internal happy dance because we're there. Because I want you to know there's two decisions to be made. Number one is, do I like you, trust you, or do I think you're the right person to, to represent me? Okay, that's the biggest sale. Second question is, what price are we gonna come up with to put this thing on the market? I don't want those two connected because too many people connect those and that doesn't make any sense, right? You don't go hire your attorney based on what outcome he's gonna get you. You base the attorney on how good he is to represent you and take your case and the strength and that he presents and his knowledge and relationship with the judges and all that stuff. The whole package is what you're hiring. So the question is, hire us. And then strategically, we're going to figure out which price we're going to get to, right? So I want you to just separate those in your mind because right now I'm building the trust, which has been built over the last seven meetings and, and everything that we are. You guys follow that one? So it's different. All right, so let's keep going on that. All right, so back to this while we're, while we're dealing with this with the technical side of this world, I think you guys are seeing the point here is, is doing it. So I, I'll go back into the script in a second. We'll go live for the rest of the, the time. But the, the aspect is getting through, getting through the process and going through the motions and just making sure your scripts are so internalized. So even though it's in front of you, one of the things I want you to know too, is sitting in front of me is the script, right? Because we started with permission from that from the very beginning. Thanks for having me over. I wrote down three real important questions for you, which gives me permission to say, here's my questions. And I wrote down number one, number two, number three. And then it says, let me quickly read the questions I asked you over the phone, which is where we are in the listing presentation right now. And so you said you're moving to Madeira Beach and you said you wanted here and you said you wanted to get a million six and you said you wanted this and you rate your house in overall condition of this, that, and the others is correct. So I'm building all these yes sets and just confirming the stuff that I know the answer is yes to, but I'm getting them to say yes a ton of times in this presentation, which is absolutely very, very helpful to do that. So welcome back, Chris. Every time I hover over your name, it says mute or more. I hit mute. It does not give me the ability to turn on your, your, um, your camera. So something's funked up, funked up with the, um, with the deal. So yep. Yep. So that is it. I get to mute you and I get to more you, but that's the name of the game. All right. I can try and come back in as the training room. It'll kick 
Craig or whoever's logged in is that out and that might that might get me in that way. You want me to try that? Um, I, don't want, I don't want it to kill the feed and kick it. Yeah, I would, no, I would leave, no, leave that, leave that, just let it be. We'll just, we'll just kind of pivot on this one too because we're also running on to YouTube and everything from this feed too, so I don't want to mess that up. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back into the actual um, listing presentation and which is on your app. So this is the listing lead guide that we went through first, which has all of this information in it. So this is again on, uh, on our app, C21 Beggins app. And it goes through this whole process, the listing presentation, the screen, the screen. There it is, okay. So this is the actual screen presentation here. So let's, let's go back through that. So make sure, am I sharing? I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go into it right here. All right, so here's how we're doing. This is in front of me the entire time while I'm presenting. Thanks again for having me over. Just so you know, this is only gonna take between five and 25 minutes, Chris, okay? Let's just have a seat at the kitchen table. Guys, Zoom is amazing because I'm looking at you and the script is literally two inches away from my eyes. So it's fantastic to be able to do this and say, I always write, let me show you how I run my business. I always write down three real important questions. Number one, have you absolutely decided to sell your property now? Yes. Number two, will you, Chris, will you guys price your property to sell versus the competition? Or do you want to price it so it sits on the market for a long time? Yeah, no, we, we want it to sell. We don't want it to sit on the market. Okay, good. Especially in this market, it's we're going to take some good advantage of it there. And number three, and it's totally okay to say yes to this, is do you want Century 21 Beggins to handle the sale for you? I mean, well, that's why you're here. I mean, really, we just want to hear what you have to say and kind of you know, get a better gist of what you'll do. But that's that's why you're sitting here. Okay, so that's why I'm here. You just want to hear about the things I have to say and get the gist and, and we'll kind of go from there. Excellent. All right, so notice as a timeout real quick, notice I didn't say me, right? Do you want me to handle the sale for you? Because they're hiring something bigger than you too, guys, right? They're hiring Century 21. They're hiring all of our companies, they're hiring all of our agents, and you are their agent, right? So they're getting you in the whole package there. So that's why I say, do you want Century 21 Beggars to handle the sale for you? So listen, Chris and Lindsay, at the end of the presentation tonight, one of three things is going to happen. And number one is you'll have the opportunity to actually hire Century 21 Beggins. Or number two is for whatever reason, you'll decide not to actually hire Century 21 Beggins. And the third thing that could happen is we'll decide not to market your property. And any one of these three things is fine. And Chris, just so you know, this only happens if we can't come to agreement on price and terms. Does that kind of make sense to you? Yeah, I, I, I get it. Okay, cool. Now, pause, time, side note. The reason that I say this is, is really important because it takes away the attachment to the outcome. Look, you're either going to hire us, you're not going to hire us, or we're not going to want to work together. And anyone is fine with us. So let's just keep moving forward. So I'm not desperate. I don't have commission breath. I don't need your listing. You don't need me. We're on even playing field. Let's just kind of get down to business, see if we want to make this thing work, right? That's kind of what we're saying here. So then I go back into, now I kind of smacked them a little bit by saying I don't really care. And now let's jump back into number two and build some yes sets. And these are the things to get them to say yes. So let's quickly take a moment to review the questions I asked you over the phone, Chris. Okay, you guys said you were moving to Madeira Beach. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And you said you really wanted to be there in the next few months just before the baby and make sure things go well for you. So about 90 days is the time. Is that correct? That, that's what we're shooting for, yeah. Okay. Guys, these are the questions I asked him last night. They're exactly the answers that he wrote down. I can't make this shit up. He's not going to say no because these are his words. But I'm asking him the question so he says yes, 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 all the way across the board. And so, you, And you said, yep. If you could see my video, you would see my head nodding <laughs> as I'm answering it. It's, it's just a natural thing for me to nod and say, yes, that is right, to just keep going along with it and keep nodding. <laughs> right? You can't help it, especially yeah. when you're in rapport. It just works. Yeah. And you guys said you'd like to help. Now, notice my head. I, I don't hurt the situation by prodding it along, too. And you said you'd like to price your home around a million six. Isn't that right, Chris? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. And you said you didn't know anything on it, and it's free and clear. Is that right? Yeah, we, we don't know anything on it, so we're in a good position. Okay, cool. And you said you really didn't want to hold the seller financing. You'd like to take your cash out with you. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's not an option. We, we can't do seller financing. Okay, great. So listen, did you have the opportunity to watch the presentation that I sent over to you and the last night thing that I texted you over? Yeah, we did. We, we sat down and watched it. We, we, we took a few minutes and watched the whole thing. 
Okay, cool. All right, so really important. What was your favorite part about that? What stood out to you guys most? Uh, it's just, it's pretty impressive everything that the company does. So, I mean, it, it really got me excited to kind of see, get a peek behind the curtains as to what really goes on. It, and you know what? And I've been there for a long time. It's impressive to me to see all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. If you're part of a really big organization, there's a lot that comes into it. So it's, it's pretty cool. I'm glad you guys were impressed and you see the power that's going to be here behind you. So listen, Chris, there's really only two issues that we need to look at here today. And that's it. Number one is your motivation to actually sell this property, which I'm pretty sure we've established is there. And the second thing is the price that we set on your property. And now it's really important that you understand these are the only two issues in selling real estate today. You know, Chris, are we, are we crystal clear on that? Does that make sense to you? I mean, you didn't mention anything about condition. So uh, isn't that a concern? Condition is a concern. You're right on on that. And that kind of goes into price, right? Okay. So if it's pristine, it adjusts the price. If it's not pristine, it adjusts the price. So we're, we'll kind of get into that. But it's really okay. your motivation. So pretty pretty much that now we know that your motivation is there. So price is really our only issue we need to look at here today. Okay, gotcha. So what I've prepared is what's called a strategic pricing analysis. And there's kind of two parts to the research the way I do it here. And part one, I, I kind of jokingly call it fantasy land. And it's what homeowners list homes for. And a lot of times they never sell. And part two is the reality. And it's what great agents like me actually list and sell homes for. So what you and I are going to have to decide tonight is where we're going to spend our time between those two. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So the purpose of how I do my strategic pricing analysis is really just to determine the value of, of your house in the eyes of the buyer. So you guys are buyers yourself. So how do you think buyers are determining value right now? I mean, it, we're, what we're doing is we're just, we're looking to see what first matches like our needs. But then from there, I mean, as far as price and everything, we're just trying to see based on what else is out there. I mean, does, does it look like a good value compared to everything else we've been looking at? I mean, and then obviously we're comparing it to our own home too. So really just kind of just looking around and seeing what's there. You're, you're right on. You're, you're looking around, seeing what's there and doing comparison shopping, basically. You're seeing the features and benefits of one house compared to the other ones and, and seeing what's recently sold. And I know you guys are probably popping around on different sites and checking things out. So you're right on. So here's what I found is that if we want to increase value, which is what I want to do for you is, is maximize our value. So in order to increase the value of your home here, we have to do one of two things that so people find. They either have to lower the price or have more features and benefits for the same price. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got that. Okay. So yeah, so basically they're looking at what does your home have? Which one's the better kitchen? What has the better view? Which is the bigger lot? Which is the bigger bedrooms and the closets and the newer this, the newer that. And then that kind of goes into the comparison shopping thing. So unless you guys are planning on adding more features and benefits to your house, are you guys planning on doing anything more to the house? I don't think so. I mean, we'll do the, we'll do some of the little things necessary to get it ready for the market. But I mean, we're not planning on doing any type of major renovations or any, yeah. adi any additions to the home. Okay, good. Now, I don't think you need to. I think the house looks great. So really, price is really the only issue that we need to focus on. So what I'm going to compare, we're going to do is we're going to compare your property with um, three different segments, right? That's, that's that sample spa that I gave you the other day. And it's the top five properties that buyers can pay. These are the active, our current competition. And the second thing is what buyers did pay. And the third things are what buyers refused to pay on there. So this is the question that I want to do. And what I don't have up right now is let me pull one up real quick here. Please, team, we had to, we had to pivot on this one. So give me a second. Sample spa. All right. So if you look at this piece of property here, Chris, and I'm assuming I'm in front of them. So this is what we're going to actually do. So let's look at this first section of properties. These first five properties here are similar properties to yours right now that the buyer can choose from in addition to yours. So what I want you to do is look with me and guys, watch this. What, guys, just a side note, just pause for a second. This is hugely important, the process that we're going through right now. I'm gonna ask him to do three things. What's the cheapest home? What's the most expensive home? And what's the most similar to his, okay? Cheapest, most expensive, and most similar to his. Cheapest, most expensive, most similar to his. Notice, I don't say anything. I only ask questions. So when he goes through this process, you're going to see what his brain starts to do 
is he starts putting up the bumpers of value in his own mind because he's the one that's going to pick the price, right? So, okay, Chris, so let's look at these top five competitors right now. These are the ones that most likely anybody who's going to buy your house is going to look at these other five. So what is the least expensive house we're competing with right now? Uh, 132 Alita Drive. It's a 1.1, 1.1 million. All right, 1.1. I'm going to circle that one for 1.1. Okay, what is the most expensive house we're competing with right now? Uh, that's 1.72 million over on Bath Club Boulevard. Yep, huge. And look at the size of that lot, by the way. Wow. See the square rate, about double size of your lot. I just want you to see that that's, that's an option. And then what is the most similar to yours? If you look at square footage and bed baths and the lot size and all, what do you think the most similar home to yours is that's on the market right now? Uh, I would say, I guess it's going to be the 1.149. I mean, it's about the same size. Uh, they have one more bedroom than we have though, but it's, uh, that one's about the same size. Our lot's okay. a little bigger though. Yeah, lot is a little bit bigger on that one. So between that one and the one underneath it a little bit. So somewhere that one, I'm just going to circle those two for now. We'll come back. We'll revisit those and look at some pictures in a minute there. Okay. Second section here, Chris, these are the, the sold. These are the five properties that have sold and closed. And the reason why these are important is because I've got two sales to make. Number one is to the buyer and the second one is to the appraiser. Okay. And the appraiser doesn't have any emotions. He's going to look at these past sales. So these are why these are important to us. So what is the least expensive home like ours that has sold? What's the price on that one? A million fifty on Harbor Drive. Okay. And then what's the most expensive recent sold? Uh, a million three sixty nine on Fifth okay. Street. And what's the most similar to, to yours, would you say? Uh, as far as the size and everything, it, it's looking like it's over on um, in, in Indian Rocks on 20th Avenue. That's 2,800 square foot. It's about the same bedroom. So, you know, that, that's, that looks like that was probably the closest. Okay. And what's the price on that one? 1.315. Okay. Time out. Guys, I can read. I know the price on that one, but I asked him to tell me the price on that one. Why would I do that? Yeah, get start. I, it, when I see it, when I think it, and when I say it, it now becomes part of me and part of, like you were saying, the bumpers that are just driving me down. All you're doing is you put me in a car and you're basically taking me for a ride, but I'm the one that's determining every turn along the way. I'm not saying a thing, guys. This is the beauty of this whole presentation on it. And then next section, Chris, this is important just because these are what the market's totally refused. So what's the least expensive property that's been refused by the market? Uh, 1.425. Okay. And what's the most expensive? A million 949. And the closest to ours? Size wise, it's, it's probably going to be the million 949 size okay. better. But yeah, that, and it's right down the street for the most part. I mean, it's on Boca Ciega Drive. Right. So that's kind of, that's kind of the issues there. So notice a couple things on the side note here. How am I describing this house to him right now? It's ours. Like, what's the most comparable to our house? The one that we're selling right now. So this property, our property here, what's closest to ours? You see the alignment that's happening here? So I'm actually sitting, if I was in person with him, I'm sitting next to him at the table with this in front of us. And we're, we're aligning, we're strategizing, we're going back and forth. Because this is our decision to make. It's really his, but I'm making it with him. So I'm not the guy who's saying, I think you should list it at a million fifty. Right. And then starting the fight, I'm just walking him down this path where he gets to decide what he actually wants. Okay. So as when you walk into a presentation as well, when you say, let's go have a seat at the kitchen table, you know, your positioning with that is, is very key to the alignment. Like you said, I'm sitting next to him. I'm not sitting directly across from him. It is not a combative you versus me type scenario, even physically, physically, you want to align next to them to be able to align with them there align with them on the pricing, align with them if this is our property, this is our listing. Those are, that's key in alignment with them. That's right. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking you to the next spot right now. All right, so granted, this does not have the right prices on it, but you guys will get the point of what we're doing. So I don't need this for fun. All right, so here's how this works. So the next piece of paper that I rip out here and say, okay, so what did I just do with him? We walked through the whole process. And just so you could see the actual script, let me go back to the script for just a second here. See, it's exactly what I just said. These are my questions for you. First, do it for the active, second for the solds, third for the expired. What's the most expensive home we're competing with? What's the least expensive home we're competing with? What's the most similar to yours? Again, what's the most expensive, least expensive, most similar to yours? Again, 
most expensive, least expensive, most similar to yours. Okay, so you said, Chris, that you wanted to have your house sold in the next 90 days, right? So now yeah. let's look at our, our seller's cost estimator and see how much money you're gonna put in your pocket. On the left side is a slower sale, on the right side is a faster sale, and the numbers towards the middle um, are pretty much the average um, days on the market. So let's take a look at this together. So imagine these prices are not irrelevant for this point, but imagine this is probably gonna be, um, all right, so back, back to this one just for fun. So you see on the bottom here is this is the higher price. This is the lower price. This is the higher price. So I'm gonna say, Chris, to the left here, this price here is gonna be a faster sale. Like this number that's on the bottom here is what you're gonna put in your pocket. And I could probably get you a contract for that this weekend. I think that's lower than we need to go, but I just want you to know. Slower sale, slower sale on the left. Higher price, slower sale. Yeah, this is actually reversed on that one. So higher price here and it goes back. So I've got a faster sale, I've got a slower sale, and I have a price in the middle. So what I want you to do, Chris, is really focus on this bottom line right here. You see where it's all highlighted right here? Yep. This section here is fast in your pocket, this is slow in your pocket, and this is somewhere in the middle. And if we look at our time frame, the average days on our market was about 90 days. So you're gonna be walking in about three months if you price towards the middle, this is about how much money you're gonna put in your pocket. If you want money faster, it's a little bit less, but you need to be slip it over to the left side of this. If you want to wait a little while and just kind of pioneer a new price for the neighborhood, I'm fine going over to the right. It's completely up to you. But knowing what you know about your timing and when you want to go, here are the list prices here. This is the higher price. This is the lower price. This is more in the middle. Where do you want to, where do you think we ought to get started, Chris? I, well, based on everything you're telling me, I need to be more in the middle, but based on everything that we really want and need, I mean, we, we need to be on the higher end. So what, what does that mean for us? What do you, I mean, what do you rec, what do you recommend? What would you list it at? Um, you know what? That's a good question for when me, the way I do things, when I make a decision to do something, I do it and just get it done. So I would probably price it so I know it could sell. I mean, the reality of it is what's, what's an extra five or six, seven, eight grand right in the grand scheme of things if, if it's sold and you're gone right so for me i would really go head to head on that one property on irb and i would price it right about about 50 grand under that to show our intent that we're right there which would put me probably around here right i would go somewhere in this range and in, in this section in this column here so that's where i would go and then the question is how quickly do you guys want to be packing it's ultimately up to you I'll sell, any one of these will sell. It's just a matter of how long. It might take seven, eight months to get to the higher price point. Um, I could sell it this weekend for the lower. I would never let you do that, by the way. I just want you to know if you had to get out, we could do it now. That's how much you put in your pocket. So somewhere in the middle to the right is where I would sit. Okay. okay. I mean, I, we, we do have to be there. It's, it's, well, I, have a, I have to leave, I have to move. It's a job transfer, so I have to be there in three months. I don't want to carry payments. so. I mean, that middle of the road is, it's not what I want, but do you think we can go like one, one step a little bit higher? Cause I know that if, if we got down to it, you're telling me you feel confident we should still be able to sell it if we had to reduce the price a little bit, but can we try? We could do whatever you want. I mean, I work, I work for you, right? And right now supply and demand is on our side and there's not much out there and your house is beautiful. So I, I know we'll attract anywhere in this range here, we'll attract the showings. And then that's where I come in is actually connect with the people and sell the house. And that's where we talk about how I know how to read people and, and get to their personality styles and their representational systems. Just get them to the door. All I want to do is make sure that our price brings them to the door and then let me sell this house versus the other houses, right? So I feel comfortable giving me anywhere in this range here makes it work for me. Um, one's just going to get you a contract faster. One's going to be a little bit longer. I'm here no matter what. So it's up to you. So now that you've seen this little range, where do you guys want to get started? I mean, I hear, I hear what you're saying, but I, I think we want to be in the middle. I think that, that middle number there, right? You know, let's just split the difference. I mean, it, it's not where we want it to be, but let's be at the three, that 360 number right there in the middle. Um, I, I think based on that, you, when you showed me some of the time on market, I, I think that's probably going to be our best bet to start off with. And um, I'll be okay if I have to go a little bit more than that. But I mean, I think that's where I really need to be. Okay. I agree. I think that's a good strategy over there. So I'm going to write in the listing agreement right now, the 360 and go ahead and you guys go ahead and click here and sign and you're good to go. 
and then we'll get started. And here's all the paperwork we need to go. And guys, that is the listing presentation. And the cool part about paperwork, if you do the process correctly, they will have all the paperwork already. You have already sent it to them in dot loop. It's already gonna be in their email or you would have dropped off hard copies at your preview. They would have had the contract. They would have had the copy of the spa and what's gonna be filled in later. They'll have all of those things. We're, we're trying to clear out as many objections as possible. So if you give them everything they're gonna sign upfront in an email or a hard copy, you just did your job. And then when you're, when you're calling them to try and go through that process of saying, Hey, I just wanted to call and confirm our presentation time. Did you have a chance to look through the documents that I had sent you? Uh, was there any questions that you had? Was there anything you had any concerns with? They're going to tell you if there's any concerns. Hey, I noticed on here, it's had a time frame, or I noticed on here about the commissions or the property disclosure. You said, that's, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. I'll be sure we answer all of those questions at our, at our appointment this evening. So five o'clock still works good for you. You know, so they're already going to have the paperwork, so it's not going to be any major hills or hurdles to overcome there when they have already had it, already saw it. Hey, click and sign. There you go. There you go. Okay, so that is really what I wanted to cover in this time, and we're right on schedule on this one. So what I want, what I wanted this to do for you guys is the link is in your chat scroll. Um, it's on the app, Central and Beggins app. It's on be3agents.com, right? And it's all there, right? So what I want you to do is first admit to yourself that you need to learn it, okay? And then set some time in your schedule to make it happen, right? Half an hour a day, guys. Just put it out there. Put it out there. Put it out there and say from 3 o'clock to 3.30, I'm going to role play. And I'm going to say, thanks again for having me over. Let's take five, 25 minutes. For Let's say the kitchen table. I've got three or five questions for you. You need, just need to go through it and then have it in front of you. Role play it, read it, role play it, read it. And then say, honey, pretend you're a seller. I'm going to role play this over dinner. Let's go back and let's do this whole thing and practice. And then go to the office and say, hey, hey, Bob, let's go do a little role play. Let's get that you practice yours. I'll practice mine. And then because now you're unstoppable. Now it is bring a listing presentation on. Bring me a lead because there's no pressure now. It's not like come over and give me a price. No, no, no. That's not how I run my business. Here's how I run my business. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over. I'm going to take a look at your house. I'm going to do the whole process. And we're going to go for it. You know the process. It's prospect. It's, it's pre-qualify. It's preview the house. Leave the 11 questions. Give them a sample spot. Go do your pricing. Go over to the house. Send them the video. And then come over and say, thanks again for having me over. It takes five, 25 minutes. Obviously, you can stay. We're done three more price for number one, number two, number three. Right? And then you go through and say, okay, which price? It's high price, low price, middle price. Where do you guys want to get started? Great. Sign the contract. Done. Right? It takes all the pressure off, all of it's off. And if they say, I don't like you, then next, go get another one. If they, they won't price it in reality, leave. Go get somebody who will. Guys, you need one or two deals a month, most of you. And you're happy and life is good. So take the pressure off and just run it like a business, guys. Just, just do it. Right? It's so simple. It's not, it's, and it's easy. It just requires you to take the time. Yep. Now, um, was it Chuck had, you know, what about commission? You know, great question, Chuck. If you, you're talking about commission, commission objections are only going to really come up if they don't have confidence in you. Right. And it, it's a tough thing to say, but it's absolutely true. If you're creating doubt, then they're going to get the commission objections. If you're still going to get a commission objection, then it just is what it is. And they're gonna maybe give you one. So this is, this is it real quick. I want you to cut your commission. The other agent said, it, it, will you cut your commission? The other agent said they would, okay? The other agent said they, oh wait, you know, I, I didn't share. Let me share real quick. Just, I'm gonna, and then, I'm, then we'll break in just a second. I'm gonna share the screen because I think it's a good point. All right, so this is all in your app too. And this is all on our website too, the three agents. Will you cut your commissions? The other agent said they would. The other agent said they would. That's interesting. Uh, Chuck, let me tell you why. Can I tell you why that makes me nervous? I mean, this is one of the largest financial assets you have, right? And if the other agent doesn't have the courage to stand up to you regarding their own worth, I mean, how strong could they possibly be when it comes to defending you and the price that we set on your property? Right? I have that courage. Do you feel I can sell your home? I do? Great. Then sign the contract. Well, I want you to cut your commission. No. Any other questions? 
That's it. That's how you handle commissions, guys. And if they say, well, I'm only going to do it if you do it for a dollar fifty, then say, go call a Yahoo that doesn't do what I do. Go buy the base model rather than the luxury version. Right? There's something for everybody. Guys, we are very valuable. We are very good at what we do. You are very good at what you do. You are very valuable. And you need to portray that. And you portray that by running your system and doing this process and making sure you do what you do. And it's going to become abundantly clear that you're the right choice for them. And so that's the point of practice. That's the point of practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. So you just show up on autopilot. You're in neutral. You're connecting. D-I-S-E, V-A-K, body posture, language, eye contact, all that other stuff comes into play. You're not going to get the objection handlers. You're not going to get it. So I, just, I promise you, you won't. So please practice, 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 and you're going to watch those events go down. Now, will you get them sometime? Sure. The best word in this business is next, next, next. So, and it is be brave to walk away. And there you go. Can you have a link? You can have a link to anything you want. It's on be3agents.com. It's loaded up in there. And um, if you're with us, or if you're not, technically, you can even still download the app, which Sean Beggins app, and all of our stuff's on there. So again, thanks for going through our hiccup with um, technical difficulties today, but I think it still worked out fine. And I think the content and still went through for you guys. So I want to thank you guys for your attention this morning. And I hope we brought some good value to you. And so that was fantastic. And um, thank you for your time. And Chuck, you can shoot me an email and I'll get you a copy of our spa and that too. So thank you guys. And then lunch break now. And then at one o'clock, I'm coming on with Joe Diener and we're walking through the buyer process, right? We just did the listing process. We're going through buyers and Joe is a master at the buyer experience and he really is amazing. So you're going to get a lot of content, good information from Joe, our back and forth is going to be fun. And then after that, we're, once we decide we're going to buy a house, then Craig is going to come on with Kat and Craig is a contract Jedi master. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. And Kat's an attorney and she's amazing what she does too. So you're going to watch the two of them banter on how to actually fill out the contracts properly and what strategies to do when you're negotiating it. So we've got an action packed afternoon for you. So go have a great lunch, go relax, go practice. And then we'll see you back here at um, one o'clock. So thank you guys very much for your time. And I'll see you back at one. Bye.